Hello everyone, it's Mr. Wilson. Today I'm going to be showing students how to answer one of the TED Talk reflection questions. So first off, before I actually get into answering my questions, I thought I would show my students my own notes of what I did when it came to watching this video. So when I was watching the video, I would actually write down with my pen uh, in, uh, three things. So one, important information like the name and the date and what the topic was. Two, I would write down quotes that really stuck out to me that I thought was really interesting. And three, any time that uh, there was really important information that was being portrayed to me, I always tried to write that stuff down as well. So once you finish taking down some quick jot notes, it doesn't have to be perfect. As you guys can see, mine's really messy. Oh my goodness. Uh, once you write down some jot notes, what I did is I went over and I reviewed all the information that I wrote down. And as you guys can see, I didn't highlight everything, but I highlighted some of the most important pieces of information that I found. So after I gathered all of my information and I highlighted it, I started to take a look back at some of the questions that um, I had asked my students to answer. And so what I did is I thought that I would um, answer them myself and give you guys an example of maybe what a TED Talk response looks like. So uh, first things first, what is my TED Talk about? The TED Talk was about figuring out how you as an individual can try and get into what we call like a productive flow. So trying to figure out how you can be more present in the moment when you're working on something. And he gave it in three easy steps. Uh, it was presented by a gentleman by the name of David Allen on October of 2012. One of the reasons why I personally chose this video is because, as you guys can see, I'm now working from home. And one thing that uh, I'm finding a little bit difficult is just trying to figure out my new normal and my new routine and trying to figure out how to manage everything that's going on so that I don't feel super overwhelmed or anxious or stressed. So the two things that really stuck out to me from this learning was, uh, number one, you have to use your mind to get stuff off of your mind. So let's say you're really worried about the science project coming up at the end of this week. If you're worried about it, and if it's on your mind, the best way to get it off of your mind is to actually apply yourself and try and figure it out and answer it. Second thing is, that I thought was really interesting are the three steps that he gave to help you get into that mindset. So the first one is to capture your thinking. So if you're thinking about that science project, write all of your questions and concerns down on a piece of paper. That way you can have a visualization of what you need to do. Two, make outcomes based on those uh, things that you wrote down. So which ones do you need to finish first and which ones can wait a little bit until later? And then the third one is uh, coming up with strategies and using what he calls the right maps to try and uh, place everything in, in its proper area. So let's say you're worried about science project. That would probably go into like your school map. Let's say you have something going on at home with your younger sibling that would go into your family map. Let's say you are worried about not being able to do 600 jumping jacks at once. That would go into like your health map, for example. So it's a way of you trying to kind of move everything around into different areas of your brain so that you're easily more able to answer those questions. My favorite quote was, uh, if you do not pay attention to what has your attention, you will give more attention than it deserves. Essentially saying that if you have, like if you're thinking about walking your dog and it's on your mind right now, the more that you think about walking your dog, the more time your brain is being used instead of doing something else. Uh, the only one question that I would have for my speaker that I would like to ask him in person is when it comes to the idea of like making your maps, like putting everything into different categories, my only question to him is what would necessarily be the first steps and how would I go about doing that? So hopefully this video helped you guys figure out what to do. If you guys have any questions for me about this video, please feel free to comment on mine. If you see any other students' videos that you would like to make a question about, feel free. Bye.